So we are going to do the, the sourdough bread that we serve here all the time. And I've, we grind the grain earlier, the wheat and the rye, and I think it was roughly what I do for a big amount. I do altogether about three kilos of grain. So that's not going to be what you're going to do okay. at home. So, this, so you're going to have to adjust for doing two loaves instead of the six loaves, but I can um, condense that. So the wheat and the rye, I'm going to add um, some strong white flour. And it's roughly, a, it can be a quarter to a third or even a bit more. The white flour makes it a lot lighter. And you can also, with this starter, you could do, use just rye and white, or you could do rye and spelt, or you could just do spelt. Okay. So we don't do spelt that often now because it's so expensive, but it's very nice. So this is the, um, this is roughly three kilos of the grain. And with that, I'm going to add a good three tablespoons of salt, of good quality sea salt. Obviously, we will adjust for the, what you would do. It would be a third of that, anyway, if you're making two, two loaves. And it is, it's good to see that this is all that is going in the bread. Wheat and, and rye and um, whatever your grain is, salt, the starter, and water. And the starter, which you can smell, should smell sour. Fermented. So this is only the fermentation of the, the grain at an earlier stage. And this starter that we've had, we've kept it going now for about 12, 13 years. So this is the easiest sort of method. There are other methods of making sourdough where you feed the starter culture the day before and then you take some out of it. This one, we're going to be using the entire amount of starter in the bread, and then when we are when we finish kneading, we're going to take out and put it back in the jar. So I've added the I've added a bit of water. It doesn't matter how much to the starter, and made that very liquid. And then you can just add it in there. Okay. Just or the you can dump it in. Okay. Dump. Yes. And then you can wash um, this right away. So what we can do is, because what's in here is useful, because it's still the starter. So you can add a bit of water, and I try to get every last bit out. Yeah. Okay. So I'll rinse this, and you can just start stirring that. And you're going to have to add quite a lot more water. Should I start doing that? Yeah, so you can add the water a little bit at a time. So one thing that's good to, to keep as a, a, a guideline what? is that you're, yeah, is that you're going to add, if you add too much water all at once, then you have to add more flour later on. So that's not a good thing. Whereas if you add the water slowly, little by little, mm -hmm. then you don't have a problem. So roughly, it's going to be between two and two and a half, maybe a bit more. It'll be about two uh, liters of, of water here that we're going to use, um, maybe a bit more. So not to be put off by the amount of stuff that you're mixing there, because if you're doing it at home, it'll only be right. It'll be a third of that. And sometimes, because this is, can be quite hard, right, you can just start with your hands. Yeah, it can be easier than just incorporating. And the method that we use here is using water to, to knead with and also to clean. Um, it becomes a cleaner way of doing it. So just now, when I add, you can add a bit more water. Enough. 
start to see that um, using water and kneading with water becomes quite a, a pleasant thing rather than anything getting sticky with a lot of flour. And so that this, this sourdough that we make um, is lighter than a lot of other sourdoughs, especially, say, German, Eastern European sourdoughs, which would be quite dense. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that there's a lot more water in it. So we've had the water underneath. Okay, so we can keep an idea of how much water we're going to be using, because that was full two liters, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, no, there was still a little bit. There was a little bit. Yeah. And the reason why I don't like to say exactly how much water to use is that it actually is different each time you make it. And if you, if, it's better to get a feel of what it's like. So we're going to kind of divide it in half, and the two of us can, can, uh, can practice this. And we need for 10 minutes. So I check my time. And, um, and the only thing I need right. to have, you can put that in the middle. So your hands, you want your hands to be wet. And then you're kneading it to, everyone has different techniques. I like to use my, the heel of my hand and you're folding over and what you're doing with the kneading is stretching the gluten and also incorporating air into the into the dough which is going to help it to rise and if it starts to stick to the table you put a little bit more water and you want to go little by little with the water sometimes at this stage people tend to put an awful lot of water and then it gets a bit too wet so but if you're used to making bread, you can see that this is already probably a bit, a um, li little bit wetter, a little bit more, less dense than when you use flour to, to knead with. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we can we can just swap over and good to do when we're yes good That's consistency good. yes thank you thank you and and you can you can feel how the how it's changing no the consistency of yeah. the of the grain really really is altered by the by the process of, of kneading and you even it almost feels lighter yes as you go yeah and it's coming together and the the chemically the grain is being changed the gluten is being activated and for those people who are gluten free one of the problems of finding anything that's palatable is that gluten is what makes bread taste nice so the so this technique which is an interesting one can help re is is it helps to make the bread even lighter. And this, of course, is also a good workout for the arms and the shoulders. You don't have to increase your gym membership. <laughs> you know, it can get very tiring if it's at the end of a long day to make it. But I think it's something very nice to actually feel the texture and, you know, all the different senses that are involved in eating and one of them is, is the feeling, the actual feel of food, which we don't really get anymore if everything is processed. So I check my time and we have a few more minutes. Okay. <laughs> Ten minutes can be very long. Probably get, eventually get there. I think we just we can just combine wait until them. yeah okay so we combine the two and and then we just bring this together so this is a really good consistency it's not too wet it's not too dry do you want to continue there for a bit and see oh yeah 
So the way, so with, when I do that, my hands are pointing up like this. So we are nearly there. I think we're ready. Okay. And then what we're going to, so there's two things that we could do now. One is if we want a long fermentation, we will put it, and I'll do that first, um, we will put it back in the bowl. And let, just let it rise. So the important thing here is to take, now if you're for doing only with two loaves, you'd probably take a little smaller amount than that um, and you put it back in your jar and this needs a little bit more and this is going to to rise along with our bread and I can put my lid like this but I don't want to close it because I need it needs air. So I could leave this to rise um, as it is here for about, could rise, depending on the temperature of the room, it could go on for eight hours. Yeah? And it will get much bigger and puffier. Um, or what we could do, and we might do this now, is we can put it directly into the tins and you can let just have one rising. If I leave it here and rise, I'll punch it down and then put it in the tins. So the purpose of the fermentation is to, is to make the grain more digestible for our for our gut. So the longer the fermentation goes on, the better. So after I've oiled the tins, putting a bit of flour, either some that I've reserved from the grinding or this is just white flour to put on the on the bottom of the tins. And we only need to do the bottoms because it's um, basically like because it sits in the tin so long that it doesn't won't absorb the oil. So just to show how to put it in the tin, so it's very easy when the dough is this wet because you're just roughly shaping it into, yeah? Mm -hmm. And it's probably good to have your hands a little bit wet. And the great thing about this is that you can, if you need a bit more, you just add a bit more. So you don't have to have the, the, the dough perfectly shaped before putting it into the tins. And you want to spread it out a bit? Yeah, you want it to be fully in the... This one needs a good bit more. So you're doing roughly half, half of the tins move it out. And then we leave it. Um, it's quite warm in here, so I would imagine it'll be about six to seven hours. And when you can have a look again, uh, when you can have a look again to see when it's ready, how it has risen. Okay. Okay, now it's been about seven hours later, and oh. so they're very perfectly risen here. And you can see the, uh, the starter mm -hmm. has more than doubled in size. So I close that, and this goes into the fridge. Mm -hmm. And it will be, um, you can leave it there for up to two weeks comfortably without having to use it. Okay, so any... A little bit, if you leave it longer, there's a problem it may become moldy or lose its, its uh, effectiveness as a, as a yeast starter. Um, and of course here we use it, we're doing it nearly every other day making bread. So 
one thing to say, had we, had we let it rise fully in the bowl, we would have punched it down and then put it in the, in the tins and let it rise again. Okay. So this seven hours could have been extended to 14. Sometimes I've extended it, I think the longest maybe with 18 hours, by putting it somewhere cold. Okay. Sometimes put it. Um, so it's possible people can put that in their fridge overnight. So the idea of letting it um, rise longer, but as it's, as it's fermenting, the sour taste, which is characteristic of sour, sourdough, develops, but also the grain becomes more digestible. And for people who have problems with um, digesting wheat, mm -hmm. uh, sourdough and um, this type of bread that takes a long time to ferment is quite good. Okay. For people who are celiac, it doesn't change the, the issue with the intolerance to, to gluten. But for people who are sensitive or are trying to reduce their, that, mm -hmm. that issue with gluten, that sourdough bread is actually digestible, much more digestible than ordinary. So I'm going to put it into an uh, oven which has been preheated to as high as I, my oven goes to, which is 230, and I'll put that in for um, around half an hour, and then uh, if it's, um, then I turn it down to 200 for about 20 minutes. Okay. So, but this is a very fast oven, so it's 50 minutes, sometimes it's a bit longer, sometimes um, it's a bit... Uh, um, yeah, either 50 minutes, could be 55 minutes. If you have a more conventional oven, it's definitely an hour. Okay.